possible that some of you remember The Man Show, but whew, am I hoping that you've never heard of it or never seen it? Because The Man Show is a small chunk of television history that I don't think could exist today. Disclaimer, I've been working on this video for a while now. The intent of this video is not to further demonize anybody involved. It was never meant to demonize anybody to begin with, so I don't want you to watch it through that lens. I bring up this disclaimer because Jimmy Kimmel was recently under fire for some old content that was dug up. Ironically, one clip of that spawning from The Man Show. But the video was always meant to analyze and discuss discuss the first season of The Man Show. It's controversial entrance and it's of the time success because I find it all incredibly interesting. Back to the video. I had a very vague memory of The Man Show and it was all reignited when I reviewed the rom-com down to you because The Man Show had a snazzy little cameo in it. Also, this movie was a two-pack of ass, but I digress. Hosted by Jimmy Kimmel and Adam Carolla, who I would say are giants in their industry. Kimmel now obviously the host of Jimmy Kimmel Live. And Carolla, who has since made absolute waves with his podcast. Together they ran this sketch comedy show where they celebrated chauvinism and fought back against the feminization of men. Satirically? Question mark? The Man Show ran for six seasons, but Kimmel and Carolla departed after the fourth. The last two seasons were hosted by Doug Stanhope and Joe Rogan, which honestly sounds like it could work. Now watching all six seasons, 117 episodes, 40 plus hours of The Man Show. Sounds exhausting, so I just watched the first season, 22 episodes, which still took a lot. And I wanna say I understand growing pains, and I'm assuming they get better through the next couple seasons, but here's what I got. Well, actually, I did wanna give you guys the fair warning that I am erect right now. And that's because these bad boys recently got delivered and I fucking love them. If you remember, there was a Gamer Subs competition a few months back where you could get your own shaker cup, but I needed you guys to come hard, which I'm honestly right there with you right now. I'm not sure if I should be worried yet. But you guys fucking came through and I'm so happy, dude. First and foremost, fucking thank you. This would not be possible without you selfless fucks, obviously. These are finally officially live on gamersubs.gg and code Mr. GG still gets you 10% off. And the amazing timing of it all lined me up with the release of Gamersubs' new flavor, Mango Meta. This fucking thing, my new favorite flavor by a fucking mile. It's all live on the site. If you're about it or even curious, code Mr. GG. And I also wanna hook some of you guys up so September 10th, 7 p.m. Central Time, over on my Twitch, we're gonna be giving some away and bringing the fucking vibes. I'm sorry this isn't some funny kooky ad, it's just, I'm so fucking excited about this, dog. Shout out gamer subs. back to the video. The format for the show is rather simple. They begin with a monologue, or manologue as they call it, which is usually the worst part of the show. It's pretty bad, but I think that's because the humor is so outdated. It's grainy Facebook memes your uncle shares that have typos in the iPhone touch assistant in the screenshot brought to life. They usually run around three to four minutes, AKA nearly a quarter of the show, and the jokes don't land as much as they should. And I don't just mean with me, even the audience has plenty of lackluster reactions through the show. And I understand that every joke won't be a home run. Plus, it's not like I'd prefer to see the standing ovation per sentence like you might see on The Real or some shit like that. No shade, I enjoy some of the combos, you're just saying it's fucking annoying. But for The Mad Show, it's awkward at the very least, especially when I just hear women wooing over the dead crowd and those women are a part of the show. They're paid to do that, amongst other things. Meet the Juggy Dance Squad. The Juggy Girls. The Juggies. They're a... Uh... Main City Hooters staff. And that's no offense to them. In fact, it's a compliment. But that's what they were hired to be. Sexy, bounceable women who cheer on even the shittiest of skits and help the transitions to commercial. It's funny how people look at Twitch thoughts nowadays. Can you believe this shit? This woman's just using her bodacious features and sexuality to keep these men glued to the screen. Never seen anything like this before. <laughs> I wonder where they got the idea. Maybe it was all the fucking public television we grew up on. You ever seen Sábado Gigante? You think I'm looking at fucking Don Francisco the whole time? No, I'm looking at the 19 beautiful women that he's got stuck with him every fucking episode. And then we got The Fox. William Wallace Foster. The MC of the show, who introduces the two, plays dirty show tunes, and drinks beer faster than I can- Ah, oh, fuck. By the way, I just want you to fully understand. Look at this guy. That's a pretty impressive chug. Fox drank two in that time. Beat him too. He doesn't really give any type of input, just- I'm you see, it's tradition around here to sign off the show with a chant from the Fox. Are we little Ziggy Socky to end the program? Yeah! Ziggy Socky, Ziggy Socky, hoi, hoi, hoi! Ziggy Socky, Ziggy Socky, hoi, hoi, hoi! Ziggy Socky, Ziggy Socky, hoi, hoi, hoi! Ziggy Socky! Oh my god! That's enough. 
Fox lore. I just wanted to bring you up to speed. Also, Rip Fox. Man was 67 inhaling pints on a major network TV show. Cheers, bud. Now, after the monologue, they usually move into a skit. And when they're out in the street playing pranks and goofing on the public, that is hands down their best work. Out of all the reoccurring sketches and all the dumb shit they drain time into, their on the street improv blows the rest of the show out of the water. And it's somewhat unfortunate because they blow their load their first episode with what I would consider their best skit, where they go out on the town and try to get signatures for their petition to end women's suffrage. And they get a lot of signatures. And suffrage, if you didn't know, like I didn't know, is the women's right to vote. That's funny. Men are gonna help us stop Men suffering. and women These men are. Stop us. I'm not sure about this guy. What about male suffrage? No, we're, that's okay. You wanna know what's not funny? <laughs> That was in the same episode. And I wish I could tell you that these episodes are hit or miss, but uh, it's mostly married women. A fuck ton of misses. But why? Why did I laugh out loud probably less than five times through this entire season? I like Adam Carolla. I've caught a few old podcasts. His old Catch a Contractor show was fun. Debatably the best show with Catch a in the title. And the audience, the audience. There are so many instances where it seems as if the hosts don't even have control of the show. Who would have thought a bunch of drunken idiots in whiff range of the juggies would be hard to settle down? And this one's for good old Uncle Sam! No! They're not real soldiers, you jackasses. <laughs> there are so many sketches that are just grossly overt filler. And speaking of filler, every show of the man show ends with girls on trampolines, which is exactly what it sounds like. <laughs> I sat through each and every one. I really only liked it for the George Lopez aesthetic. I don't think you guys understand some of my frustrations with this season. I feel like I just gotta go through the episodes. Episode one, Oprahization. Why is it called that? Well, they hate Oprah. Josh Peck does not. They are not Josh Peck. Although maybe they wish they were. <laughs> Our first reoccurring sketch is Father and Son, where Kimmel introduces touchy topics to his son only the way a real man could. It's on the better side of their sketches. They're much shorter. If the punchline bombs, we thankfully didn't waste too much time, unlike the next sketch. Manivations! Inventions for men. Hey, you like bacon? Well, we made a bacon football. So now you can really toss her on the pigskin. It's shit like that. The man phone. Let's just say you're on the horn with the old lady, and she says, I love you. I'm over here stroking my dick. I got lotion on my dick right now. I'm just stroking my shit. Married guys know what I'm talking about. The shotgun beer. <laughs> what the, the beer? Look at the shit you spilt. Fucking party foul, Kimmel. I don't even believe you anymore. I remember my first shotgun. Manivations is easily one of their go-to sketches, and I'm fucking sad every time I see them in lab coats. They put so much effort into Manivations just for me to check my email or Email. Wait, why isn't that what e-boys are called? That's so much better. This section is like if Michael Reeves... Actually, that's disrespectful as fuck. Every episode, they show a man show poll. It's not really a sketch. It's a fun fact of the day kind of thing, which I have no clue who or how many men they've surveyed. But apparently, a lot of you are spanking it in front of Sparky. Thanks, man show. I'm over here stroking my dick. I got lotion on my dick right now. I'm just stroking my shit. I'm horny as fuck, man. I'm a freak, man. Life a freak. Speaking of dog shit, there are so many inexplicable bits in this show. Exhibit A. I don't mean to intrude, ladies, but I'm here to avoid a copyright claim. Pro reactor skills enabled. Who's your favorite actor? Leonardo. Why? What do you mean, why? He's so talented and cute, and he saved that girl on the Titanic. That was just a movie. Hello, based on a true story. Now, I just want to remind you guys that uh, I'm not... I'm not excluding any context there. 
they just throw that at you. And that type of skid is never brought back again throughout the whole season. It's not the worst one, but it's damn close. Now, aside from comedy, these two want to make you erect because they have bits with attractive women. Bathroom talk with Cindy Crawford, where you just get to stare at supermodel Cindy Crawford and she says, Ball cock. And the audience cum jar begins to fill. Did she say what I think she said, Jimmy? I think she did say something. Dennis, can we see that again? Ball cock. Yeah. <laughs> They also answer filtered questions from the audience before girls on trampolines. I'll get to that. Let's talk about Gina Kimmel. Jimmy's first wife, couldn't imagine why. She gets shit on, often. And I commend her supporting her husband, doing whatever for the show, but I just end up feeling bad for her. Jimmy talks up her segment, The Wife's Perspective, for the end of the show, where she'll basically condemn his antics and it's predictably cut off. That's the joke. It becomes a running gag, and this is where we start to creep into a big debate about the show, because I'm starting to take some offense to a part of this show, the treatment of Gina Kimmel on there, even though I know this has all been agreed to. If you watch The Man Show, you will hear these two shit on women, mock women, and so forth. But the show's meant to be comedic, and according to Jimmy and Adam, it's meant to be satire. Now, I don't want to end up sounding like someone I would criticize, because I, for the most part, defend comedians. And here's my reasoning. You can say a lot through comedy. It's a powerful tool. You see it through some of the greats on the stand-up stage. Dave Chappelle alone has tackled every sensitive subject under the sun, but it comes from a man who is very calculated. Not everyone can include such things in their set. In my opinion, comedy is not necessarily a shield. It's used more as a Trojan horse. What I mean by that is, labeling something a joke does not pardon you of consequence. It'll help, but that's not the point. A true comedian can lay something so touchy on the table, even draw laughter, through thought-provoking rhetoric and clever writing. With that, the audience is so engaged, interested, entertained, that you see past that touchy barrier and see the comedy for what it really is. Or, you're an idiot and you're laughing because haha, <laughs> they made it funny about the gay. I don't know how I feel about them either. And funny enough, according to them, Kim and Corolla, that's why they left the show. Because basically, they felt that their audience was no longer in on the joke. But even with that, that this show still received a lot of criticism. Was the entire show satire? Should we not take anything you say seriously? Were men secretly the butt of the joke? Household Hints with Adult Film Stars begins its reign on The Man Show, where porn actresses lob you a life hack along with a Woody. How To with Uncle Phil also makes its entrance, which is nothing short of an iFunny slideshow. The character Uncle Phil is the face of the show too, and also an incredible disrespect to the name Uncle Phil. We could skip around a bit. On the Street Kimmel, where he asked random women if they would have sex with him. Hey, look, something I didn't hate. You think a pair of blue socks would attract the ladies? Yes. <laughs> I'll take them. Do these socks that I'm wearing make you want to have sex with me? No. Maybe they should have done more of that. Now, these are the first few episodes. It makes sense. They're just throwing a bunch of shit at the wall, but it's sloppy. In one straight hit, we get a man show poll, how to with Uncle Phil, and then a super random parody ad for male pattern baldness. It's not even a dedicated skit. It just plays during this dance break. Gina's doing well, baby's healthy, thank God. Uh, Barry Daniel DeLuca Kimmel's his name. He's actually sleeping backstage right now. Uh, well, why don't we bring him out and have a little look at him? How cute is he? He looks... Fat equals funny, ha, ha, ha. Are you guys ready for it? Are you guys ready for, by far, the most baffling skit in the first season of The Man Show? And that's saying a lot. It's a minute long. Hope you don't mind if I watch it with you. Hey, I'm Mariah Carey. I am an international superstar. But singing is not my first love. You are. Unbutton your pants. Come on. Do it. Mmm. Doesn't that feel good? Do I turn you on? I'm sexy, right? You want to see my underwear? Check out my butterfly. So, if you showed me this online with no context, I would think that's odd. I've seen weirder. Wood fat. It is just bizarre that somebody brainstormed this and a whole ass room agreed. I think I speak for everyone when I say that a shittily animated Mariah Carey, J-O-I, has no place in this show. I mean, maybe you're sitting there thinking that it's heading towards a punchline. That would make a bit more sense, right? Let's watch. My agent says I'm gonna be like the next Marilyn Streep. Oh, I'd like to make out with her while you watch and direct us what to do. I love being told what to do. 
And I love to be spanked. Oh, that felt good. More. I like it when you spank me. Cause I'm a perfect woman. You raffling yet? Yeah, you better cut straight to another skit. You know damn well Adam and Jimmy said, don't you fucking dare cut back to us. Even we refuse to weigh in on this fucking pervert skit that our animator Douglas made. And I just wanna let you know that I'm not just showing you the shitty parts of the show. I'm excited to show you the not shitty parts. Corolla out of the studio, I'm in. It's just naturally funny. Is it top of the line? No, but I'd be more able to look back fondly if it was just more of this. Uh, so you, you want like a pee port in your waiters. What are they? <laughs> on here and you, I locked it all up. You can fit through here, man? Well, it's a little bit big, <laughs> but I'm not going to And less of this. Oh! I think like every other episode has a little person involved. 2000s humor does not fall short. I mean, I keep asking myself if it's even fair to look at this show through this 20 years later lens, but why not? The best of the best will stand the test of time. Forward a few years later to a sketch comedy show, The Chappelle Show. Still holds up in my opinion. Does it have some duds? And can you see the age and some of the comedy and the references? Of course, but ultimately funny continues to be funny. Now, is this all subjective? Yes, shut up. My video, not yours, Fortnite dance. <laughs> I watched all of these girls on trampoline segments because if something substantial happened, I had to take note. Nothing ever did, but they did reuse a lot of shots, which really kills the flavor of it all. Uh, we can skip episode six. Now the unexplained skit choices are not done yet. How about great moments in weddings? Which is like an America's Funniest Home Videos type deal with absolutely zero commentary and not their applause. <laughs> Who's greenlighting this shit? Now I, for one, love when the crowd gets hyped because it's always over the weirdest shit. Our heads are filled up with important things like baseball stats and Doobie Brother lyrics. They remember the time 10 years ago you threw their cat off the bed. Yeah. And they're all yeah, fucking Skippy had it coming. No, fuck you, babe. That pussy's been scratching my bean bags. So Corolla goes out to ask random women questions and just watch this part. There was an operation that made you smarter, but it made your ass bigger. Would you do it? No. 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 We don't need the operation. What? The fucking boomers were such poor taste scoundrels that they convinced women that a wagon was ugh, gross. Curry backside? Ugh. It didn't even register when I was watching this skit. Imagine seeing a fat ass at this time and just being like, look at chunky monkeys over there. Why don't you try making that ass a little flatter, honey? <laughs> Fucking got her, Jim. I don't get it. Were flat asses the appeal? Hey, when I slap your ass, I want it to feel like a doomsday bunker. When I come up behind you during breakfast, give you a nice smack, I want to fucking fracture my wrist. You want to talk about a despicable time in history? The shaming of fat asses? Genocide? I'm just mind blown that a fat ass was at any point just a negative thing. I'm disgusted and my day is ruined. It's the worst thing about this show. All these men in the audience behave exactly like you expect them to. They're all nervous and jumpy when discussing these questions. It's almost like they don't believe they're actually this stereotypical man that they're trying to be. It's just really sad, honestly. That doesn't want right. it in the house? Right. A wife, oh, a wife, okay. <laughs> are they, I see. Uh, what kind of memorabilia? Yeah, what are we talking about? Jerseys or uh, pictures Videos, of Videos, pictures, whatever. Videos and pictures. Oh, really? Yeah. Now, well, I guess now is a good time as any to bring up the thoughts of Jimmy Kimmel and Adam Carolla on The Man Show years later. And I don't think either of them regret doing it. It was just a chapter in their lives, a stepping stone, and they worked with somebody that they each admired. They both still stand by the statement that with The Man Show, men were the butt of the joke more often than not. It wasn't this misogynistic parade that critics claim it was. The problem, and what apparently helped solidify them walking away was the clear divisiveness in their audience. Even though Jimmy and Adam were well aware of the satire at play and egged it on at every turn, a large portion of the audience was not. And that's where we run into our wall. I think a lot of critics are very black and white about this show and don't really discuss a middle ground. If what Adam and Jimmy say is true, does that mean they are completely exonerated of all their accusations and criticisms? I think about it this way. When you put something out into the world that's documented, you then lose control of that entirely. You cannot 
cannot tell people how to react to it. You can tell them what your intention was with said thing, but whatever spawns from what you put out creates the debate of responsibility. Should you be held responsible for that? Even though that was not your intention. Kimmel and Corolla didn't want to create this militia of frat guy soldiers, but it happened. This satiric narrative of fighting against the feminization of the world was a real fight for some men. And through this medium, I bet some men decided to take on that fight. It's the classic YouTuber makes a comedic video on another YouTuber, but condemns the audience from taking it to their doorstep and harassing this person. You cannot control what your audience takes from that video and what they do with that. Now let's back it up a bit, because some people cannot even make it there in the debate. Because they shut these two down immediately, claiming that some of these skits cannot be labeled as satire. That frankly, they're just too offensive and cannot be excused. And this is now where I mentioned the obvious of the time success of The Man Show. If you watch this series with, pun intended, 2020 vision, you might cringe, you might be offended, you might even demand for these two to apologize two decades later. Which ultimately brings us to the massive discussion of cancel culture. But frankly, I don't think I need to tell you whether I think it was right, it was wrong, I'm somewhere in the middle, or I just don't care to tell you that this show could not exist today. But some people would even disagree with that statement. In fact, somebody that disagrees with that is Jimmy Kimmel himself. He says the show would do even better today. Because aside from the people who are outraged, there's people who are outraged by the outrage. Run counter to political correctness. And he's not wrong, there's an audience there. Look at somebody like Andrew Schultz, whose online take of a short form talk show is booming. And unlike any late night host, he does not censor himself, but he is calculated. Corolla was also asked if the man show would work today, but his answer was ultimately no. That today he couldn't see two straight white men hosting such a show. And I just want to reiterate that I disagree with Jimmy because he said, and I quote, if we put the man show on today in its identical form, it would be an even bigger hit than it was back then. I believe that very strongly. I am Jimmy Kimmel. And my main problem with that statement, identical form. Now, if he means format, I'll give him a little bit more rope to work with. But if he means identical, inside and out, there's just no way. Two reasons. If this is on a major network or streaming service, you are now at their whim. And with the humor in this show, every sub community in every community is gonna try to send your ass out that door. And we're not new to this. People wanted Dave Chappelle canceled as soon as his first comeback special aired. I mean, they gun for his ass and those people also put pressure on Netflix who brought him over and paid him. But all his specials are still up. And that's where I get to my second reason. Dave Chappelle draws in eyes and is in the top 1% of comedians when it comes to this shit. I'm a big fan. A lot of people are. I think he's great at what he does. The man show sucks. It's just not that funny. It's not that good. You can't be both. You can't be offensive and suck. I mean, you can, but that thread you're hanging on by is pound a snap. Now we're a little more than a third of the way through the season. I think it's safe to assume that they've had enough screen time to get into a groove. So the episodes should get better from here on out, right? This episode has their first guest ever, and they chose this guy who has tits. Apparently, he put in these implants because he took on a bet. He claims to be a gambler for a living. And I'm gonna take the wild guess that this man, no offense, he's dead. It's a compilation episode. Fireman. Women love fireman. <laughs> Apparently a few of the guys in our audience love him too. <laughs> fireman is the closest thing you can get to superhero and you don't even have to wear tights. Right. Policeman, number two. You got the same thing going. <laughs> oh, this episode must be recent. You picked up by now that the episodes aren't getting better, right? Even the bombs are starting to hit different. Give me sports, poof. Give me police chases, poof. I'm watching the Playboy channel and my wife comes in. Poof, it's the Discovery Channel. Poof, I farted. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually starting to enjoy these two attempting to riff with the audience at the end of the show. It just never really becomes an amazing moment because the audience sucks. They suck. I just pretend that Jimmy and Adam hate the audience and it makes it much more tolerable. Why do women get mad when you have your hands down your pants? They, yeah, women do get mad about yeah, that. And they're no, jealous. Is that, your, is that your woman right there? Yeah. Yeah. It's an act of defiance. Why don't you just shove your hand down your pants from right now? That's right. Yeah! Uh, like, I genuinely hope they see that this guy is an idiot and they're facetiously egging him on. Which, if I were to take a guess, they are, honestly. You know, it's, it's Thanksgiving and I'm feeling generous. Um, you can go home with, with our juggy dancer. 
Dog, why are you yelling in my face? The format has become incredibly stale at this point. It would take another four episodes until I'd be somewhat invested again. I think this episode helps support the claim that Jimmy and Adam made regarding the criticism surrounding the show. The entire episode is a parody of a woman's daytime talk show. And the funny thing about it is that they parody women pandering to other women, throwing out generic complaints and cheesy jokes for applause breaks, which they had to understand the irony there. I don't think Jimmy and Adam are idiots. Shaving. Don't you hate the little hairs all over the sink? <laughs> all over the sink? Uh -huh. how, how about all over the place? Can we talk? This whole parody, although kind of fucking stupid, helps me believe that they had a similar goal with the man show. Although by this logic, that would mean that for this episode, women are the butt of the joke, right? This is so fucking meta. So you remember how I said Gina, Jimmy's ex-wife, gets shit on? This is one of the episodes where it's just mean. I think just because it's void of comedy. This is the 359BJ5. <laughs> The boys at the lab, the boys at the lab call her the mouth bot. This is my wife, Gina. Come on out, Gina. She's no mouth bot, believe me. Uh, uh, go on, get out of here, honey. <laughs> I mean, the good news is that at least they still have skits like this to break up the tension. Do I'm it. going in! No! They can't stop me! All right. Well, if you must, you must. It is the name of science. Here we go. Adam? <laughs> Oh, Adam. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> hey, Jimmy, get a load of these, Jimmy. Wow. <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> my penis! Who's writing for this fucking show? What kind of no-name bots did they hire to Jeffrey Ross? The Roastmaster General? I love Jeff. Matt Silverstein? The co-creator of Drawn Together? I love that show. I'm confused. I just want somebody to blame. You know what, now that I read some of those names, I think I'm just being too judgmental. I got a feeling that they're cooking up some fire. She spent 600 bucks replacing the crap Jimmy threw out, so. <laughs> Hold on a second, I have to fart on you. <laughs> I am astounded that the man show was approved for more episodes, let alone seasons. I'm sorry, I've been keeping my cool as much as I possibly can. This is a boiling puddle of piss, just getting worse as time goes on. This last episode is one of the worst, bringing all my criticisms to light and just boring the audience with this Horse shit. I am so impressed with myself because watching this season was like a second job. Now I do have hope for season two. I don't know why. There's nothing that leads me to have such optimism, but I do. Does the season have its moments? Yes, but they are very far and few between. The Man Show could not exist today. And even if it did, it would not succeed. All the fucking money that people threw at this. And I would have rather just listened to Jimmy and Adam shoot the shit on a podcast. And that probably would have been, be no, that would have been better. Amidst the controversies and criticisms, I can't veer away from the fact that this show is just poorly executed. Even with some names in the writing room and our host, the creative efforts are garbage. The only thing that gives this show some sort of soul, not the juggies, it's our host. The Fox is also a delight, but he's unfortunately not gonna be there for the following seasons. So sure, Jimmy and Adam throw out some stinkers, they're a bit awkward sometimes and make this show hard to defend, but when you loosen the restrictions on these two, when you remove the script, those are the moments where you see this show come to life. But at that point, the defibrillator is just shaking the corpse. Sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it, sing it. This video has been in the works for a very, very long time, and I am very happy to finally fucking release it. I plan on making this a series. I already have my next show chosen, and I do plan on checking out more seasons of The Man Show if you guys want. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Here is your second reminder to please leave a like. Subscribe because I have more content coming your way. Shout out to my patrons, the real ones on screen right now. They are very good people. I support them. Shout out to Donnell Robbins and shout out to Maria Cruz for retweeting my last video tweet. Don't forget the Gamersub shakers are now live at gamersubs.gg. Code Mr. GG still gets you 10% off. Limited supply, by the way. These aren't just going to be there forever. So also the new flavor mango meta is just if you ever want to get your day started. <coughs> and as always, I am Mr. GG and I am out.